Yo, what's going on guys? Arix here. Welcome back to another video for Godfall. And today I want to talk about loot. More specifically, I want to show you six really cool legendary items that myself and the team have got during our time playing Godfall. We've been blitzing through the game, got to end game, and we're starting to farm things like the Ascended Tower of Trials and the Dreamstones. And we've got quite a lot of loot, but a few of those items are incredibly cool. Some of them are just so powerful that they are drastically changing the way that we play and they're just kind of you know making some of the boss runs just like a walk in the park because they are so powerful so uh, i thought i'd share those with you guys if you guys got anything cool then by all means let me know in the comments down below and of course be sure to keep it locked because we've got plenty more godful stuff coming your way but to begin with gotta start off with the hammer because of course i am a hammer main i love the hammer and this one is the dark star crusher it looks incredibly cool but what's really awesome about this one is that whenever you perform a weapon technique, so southern or northern, your special abilities basically, it creates a time bubble that slows enemies by 30% and there's a two minute cooldown for this. Now you guys might have encountered this if you fought one of the later bosses, so you kind of know that those time bubbles can be incredibly potent. And the crazy thing about this is that it works on all enemies, even bosses. This quite literally lets you create large openings in bosses' defenses, meaning you can get damage in without having to worry about dodging too much. So, uh, you know, whether this gets enough in the future, we'll have to wait and see. But for the time being, dropping down a time slow bubble on a boss is just nuts. Moving on from there, we then have a banner, the standard of the gold lion. Of course, banners are you know an integral part of your loadout, and while they might not look as fancy and flashy as weapons, this one is worth talking about because it gives you plus 30% weapon technique charge speed, shield charge speed, and archon fury charge speed. Basically, all the things that you want to be using, it gives you a big boost on their charge whilst you're within it. So overall, it's just a really useful banner as it allows you to refresh your powerful and useful abilities incredibly quickly. Next up on the weapon front, we have a longsword, which is fast becoming my kind of second favorite weapon just because of the sort of timing attacks and some of the sort of speed of the attacks. They're just so satisfying to use. But this one, the Sword of Courage, when you inflict bleed, you shoot up to two projectiles that each deal 3,259 physical damage to an enemy. So assuming you can of course reliably inflict the bleed status, this does do devastating damage to enemies. It's much more useful in something like Tower of Trials because it's better against groups of enemies compared to say one larger enemy and you can then get buffs that increase your bleed chance. So uh, definitely one to look out for. After that, we then have a charm, the Ash Meteorite, where this one is incredibly potent. Whenever you hit a weak point, you shoot a projectile that deals 3,488 physical damage. And of course, if you were to pair that with a Valor Plate like Illumina, where you can then just reveal weak points at the drop of a hat, then this is incredibly potent. Basically, if you focus on weak points a lot, then uh, this is one you definitely want to be equipping. There's then an augment called Surity, I believe that's how you pronounce it, where whenever you hit an enemy with your northern technique, you expose the enemy's weak points and deal plus 84% weak point damage the next time you hit a weak point. So when you factor in the kind of typical gameplay flow, you expose a weak point, thus getting your 84% weak point damage, and you then hit the weak point with that damage boost, it is just a surefire way to completely wreck enemies. It also exposes the weak points for your team, so it is very useful in a co-op setting. And then finally, the last one I want to talk about are the dual blades called the Storm Flayers. While Inner Storm is active, which is the northern technique for the dual blades, you apply Soul Shatter build up to nearby enemies, and all your attacks deal Soul Shatter damage. Keep in mind, normally that is of course reserved to the lighter attacks, but with this, it's any attack. So while in Inner Storm, you can quickly dish out insane damage as you gain an aura that applies Soul Shatter quickly to enemies. And light attacks now proc Soul Shatter, meaning you don't even have to use the slower, heavy attacks to do so. So basically, if you want to kind of lean more into that Soul Shatter playstyle, this is one for you. So for the time being, that is pretty much it. That's a rundown on some of the most noteworthy legendaries we've found so far. Of course, I'm sure there are plenty more and we still have yet to kind of discover the ones that are exclusive, the Ascended Tower of Trials. So, you know, as and when we discover those, I'll be sure to uh, put up some more videos. But for the time being, that is it. 
Thanks so much for watching guys, I hope you enjoyed that video. Don't forget, if you haven't already done so, you can join the Arax Gaming Discord. We've got an awesome community over there with so many different channels for you to chat loads of different topics and different games. I'm in there, the team's in there. If you guys wanna chat with us, find people to play with, it's just in general a great place to be. And of course, if you enjoyed this video, don't forget to turn on those notifications so you don't miss any of our future uploads.